Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video requires a little bit of an explanation, but I think it will answer some questions that I get pretty often. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the very select products that I cannot go without. I cannot be without these in my routine, they do too much for me, versus the ingredients that I will not be without, and yet, I don't really care who it is that makes those, I care about getting the best deal. I'm not rich, what can I say? As always, timestamps and links will be in the description box below, but I do want to let you know I have today's video divided up into two different categories. First, we're going to be going over my barrier boosting and anti-aging products and ingredients, and the second half of this video will be about acne care and prevention because I am a fortunate soul who has both acne and dry skin. And I also want to make sure I let you know in the intro here that this is not an exhaustive video. This is kind of more of a video about a lot of active ingredients, maybe semi-active ingredients for lack of a better description. So we're not going to be including products like makeup remover. Of course, this is very important for me as a person that wears makeup, but I'm just not going to cover it today. I always have some kind of makeup remover around. And secondly, sunscreen. Sunscreen is, of course, very important in a routine, but I kind of just did this video. If you happen to see my Best Sunscreens Part 1, we have a long conversation in that video about the base ingredients that I look for, the specific filters that I look for that gives me a lot of flexibility in sunscreens. And as far as answering questions, a question that I get a lot is, what's the difference between ingredients and formulation? And I think that's kind of going to be something that comes up in today's video. Sometimes I see people talk about ingredients versus formulation as if these things are uh, one. One is the true answer, you know, meaning skincare is only the ingredients list that you see versus it's only the formulation, so therefore the ingredients list doesn't matter at all. For me personally, I tend to feel that the reality lies a little more in the middle. The ingredients are very important to me because I do react to some ingredients, I do better with some ingredients, but the formulation also matters as well. How are those ingredients put into a formula? What are they combined with? So yes, in my opinion, both the formulation and the ingredients matter, at least to me. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. I want to start with a product that I will not go without. Get your bingo cards out because some of you know what's coming. It is, of course, Stradia's now renamed Lipid Gold. This is kind of a really funny way to start this video because in all truth, I haven't been using this as much lately because we have some new barrier boosting products on the market. I'm testing those right now. But the reason I'm still putting Lipid Gold into this category, which has so few products in the end of this video, is because there's nothing like this. There is nothing else on the market that is quite like Lipid Gold. Ceramides are pretty easy to find. There's not really a, a shortage of niacinamide in the world of skincare is there, but this is special. And I think that's because it is the full formulation with this. It's also a fully fragrance-free product. On that note though, I have been thinking about this more. You know, I'm always over here thinking the danger in that. And I do feel that some people might not like the smell of Lipid Gold. It has a fragrance-free smell to it. You know, all of the skincare ingredients we use, they do have smells to them. Whether we call them fragrance or not, they, they have smells. But fragrance can be a real mixed bag. It might make things smell better, but when your barrier is compromised, for me in my skin type, that's a pretty good time for me to go fragrance-free. So it's just a product that I always know I can rely on. I feel like this has been in favorites lists pretty much since I found it. I won't go without it. I still don't have the new packaging, but eventually, eventually I will. I do have a code with Stradia. I still buy my own products. I don't think there's anything in this video I have to disclose. I think I've bought everything in this video, but yes, I do have a Stradia code. I'll include it on the screen and in the description box below. Next up is another product that I will not be without, and uh, it, yeah, it, it is Misha's 
Chogong Jean Yungin Jean Cream. I just madly fell in love with this. As is the case with all of my supposed must-haves, it's not necessarily a must-have, except I really, really love using this and I love my results from it. I tried to go without this and I missed it so much so quickly. I feel like what makes this so special to me is the texture. This is a very occlusive cream that I love to use at night, similar to something like Aquaphor and yet not quite as sticky as Aquaphor is. I love using Aquaphor for the results, but I don't actually love the process of using it. And I think that's why this has just been so perfect for me. It's very affordable, all things considered. It's affordable on YesStyle and Stylevana. If you go to their website, it's kind of expensive. But on YesStyle and Stylevana, I've been buying this for around $30. I just got this off YesStyle, my second bottle now, second tub. <laughs> That's a tub, not a bottle. Yeah. For less than $30 with their promotions. And that to me is just everything I need. You are in my budget. And that's a bit of a perfect trinity for those of us that are skincare enthusiasts. You want to find a product that you look forward to using, that you get great results from, and that is still within your budget, whatever your budget may be. And I still haven't really told you much about the ingredients because the texture is actually what's winning me over. But as I said, products are their ingredients and their formulation, so I do love the formulation of this as well. It's an anti-aging blend of multiple kind of hanbang-based ingredients. Definitely not as condensed as brands like Suwasu or Dunginbi, but again, when it comes to the moisturizing step where I'm just locking everything in, that is pure perfection for me. Let's talk about retinoids next. This is such a good example of an ingredient that I will not be without, but I am not at all a loyalist here, not at all. So the retinoid that I use is Adapalene. That is the one that is recommended for helping with acne. It was previously only available by prescription, but it's now over the counter for those of us in the US. And you might think I'm goofing up here. This is not my acne section yet, but I'm putting it here because I wholeheartedly do believe that Adapalene has anti-aging properties as well. We have some preliminary research suggesting that it is, and I just feel like for me, it has been as well. Are we now, I think we're, are we two years into it? Where did the last year go? The years start coming and they don't stop coming. Oh my gosh. I feel like there's a product that people typically have in mind when talking about Adapalene, and that is, of course, different. If you remember when I first started on my own Adapalene journey, I had a hard time calling the La Roche-Posay Epiclar gel uh, not different. <laughs> Now, here's the deal. I was buying this from Ulta because they kept running 40% off promotions. Look at how much I have left in this. What is that? Maybe two uses? Maybe? And everything's so expensive. Everything is so expensive these days that I was in Walgreens and I picked up this. The 0.1% Adapalene Treatment Gel by Walgreens brand. It says on it, compared to the active ingredients in Differin Gel, so I did. And my friends, let me tell you. I bought this for a reason. I feel like this probably won't give me the, uh, what do the kids call it, clout? The clout of, well, it even looks like different. <laughs> but I know the active ingredient that I need for my skin, so I'll buy it from Walgreens brand. It's not a big deal to me. So, you know, no loyalty there. I will buy Walgreens brand as needed. Let's talk about a barrier supporting ingredient next. And some of you know that I am going to talk about bifida ferment lysate. With this, I will admit to you, I do have a favorite, the Monyo Bifida Biome Complex Ampoule. And this is a favorite for the same reason as Stradia's Lipid Gold, the same reason as Chogongjin. I've had incredible results with the ingredient Bifida Ferment Lysate, and I like the formulation of Monyo. I like that ingredients list. I feel like it does do a little more for my skin. But truth be told, I tried Eisentree's. And I was happy with it. Just like with Manos, it did take genuinely a couple of months to see the results, but it's still a good option. I need to finish this one, the Axis Y uh, Biome Radiating Intensified Essence. This is good too. It just 
has some essential oils that I know won't work for everyone, but strangely enough, the specific essential oils that Axis Y used, and my skin does fine with them. I, I don't know what to tell you. My skin likes patchouli. Random. It doesn't like bergamot, but it likes patchouli. I guess it's got its own musical preferences, you know what I'm saying? So this is all to say, this is an example of where I do have a favorite formulation, but I'm not necessarily loyal to it. I'll try other formulations with this ingredient. How have I not mentioned the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair? I like that one too. That one is just a little bit too expensive. I feel like I am fine with price points as long as we don't start going over $40. That's, that's where it's expensive to me. It is funny though, that's something that's very personal. A lot of people will not spend over $20 on a product. It's all personal. And one more category here, and that is peptides. I will try a lot of peptide containing products. In fact, we just went over one. A nice perk of the Manyo product is it has some peptide ingredients. But I do have some favorites. It's the Ordinary's Multi-Peptide Serum in particular. I feel like I've had conversations a lot about this product where I say, this is a great peptide product. And people say, yeah, but what's one that is a little bit more expensive and a little bit better? I don't actually have one that I think is objectively better. I do like the Peach and Lily Copper Peptide Serum, but I'm going without it right now. <laughs> because to me, this gives me all of the peptides that I need. Now, a quick reiteration with peptides, remember that they may do a lot more for our skin. A lot of companies kind of allude to some things that they do but we know that they are humectants, and for that reason, I wanna always have them in my routine. I have dry skin, it is dehydrated whenever my barrier is compromised, so having peptides in my routine is so helpful for me personally. Let's move on to part two, acne care. I have only one product here that I will never be without, and it is the lion pear that I just talked about. Now there's something really important you should know about the lion pear cream. This is an anti-inflammatory product. It is not a product that I use entirely on its own for the purpose of treating acne. If you watched the last section, we already covered the main ingredient that I would say has helped me with my acne and may also have anti-aging benefits. So this helps. This completes the acne routine, really, because it is so effective at reducing inflammation. I have never used a product that is this level of anti-inflammatory for me. Now, I know I saw some comments saying it does contain fragrance, I know, but it is also the only product that I'm aware of that has these ingredients in it. So like everything, I'm not saying that this is a product that every last one of you needs to buy. This is only my experience and I will not be without this. No way. Next up, we have an ingredient that I will not be without for acne care, and that is azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is so funny because I feel like every time I start spouting my mouth about how I feel on azelaic acid, it always comes across more negatively than I intend. I love this ingredient. I will not be without it. But there's some things I feel like we should talk about with that ingredient that just always ends up sounding a little negative. Okay, so azelaic acid is special because it is antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and helps to fight hyperpigmentation, which is quite a unique combination. You usually don't see ingredients target those three things together. However, in all truth, I feel that it is maybe not the best at any of those three things. I had some people asking why I didn't include azelaic acid in my hyperpigmentation video because I don't feel that I've seen it do a lot on hyperpigmentation on its own. And it was kind of slow to see results in the beginning. See, it always sounds negative. It always starts out sounding negative, but let me tell you why I love it. I love it because unlike most active ingredients, this is not hard for me to use. It is hard for me to use AHAs. I still have to be cautious with using adapalene or my skin gets really dried out. Azelaic acid, I just feel like I can use it whenever I want to. It's very flexible, and yet I do feel in particular, I feel it helps to prevent 
acne or the worsening of acne and maybe to help with some of the hyperpigmentation as well. So I think what's hard is that I'm always trying to not, uh, you know, be too overzealous with ingredients. I don't want people to watch my videos and come away feeling like you need to use all of the products out there. But in doing that, I think it's sometimes hard to not sound more negative than you mean to. Anyway, I love this ingredient. We do use it at 10% in over-the-counter products. Wait, we have a whole nother conversation to have here. This 10% level is lower than the established literature, but something that's so important to keep in mind is that doesn't mean that it's ineffective with these kind of products. I've got peach slices and Costa de Baja. We have so much anecdotal reports on this, so much anecdotal evidence. It is not just me, a lot of people feel that this level is adequate for helping with their acne. The two products that I have here are the Costa de Baja as well as the peach slices. Originally, I thought I liked the peach slices a lot more because it does have kind of a creamy base to it. But I think that, I think what it is with azelaic acid is it still is inactive, so there may be a little bit of an adjustment period. The Costa de Baja was a little harder for me to adjust to. But now that I have, this is the product that I most recently repurchased. I think I'm gonna just go ahead and run out of my peach slices. I've enjoyed it, don't get me wrong, but the peach, the Costa Baja, costs less. Oh, I, I like saving money. Let's fly through the next one, which is hydrocolloids. I feel like I talk about these all the time because I use them all the time as somebody with acne. Anytime I get a pimple, I put one of these on it. So really what we have here is another case where I'm flexible, I'll buy whatever's the best deal, but I kind of do have a favorite because these do tend to be the best deal. These Eliza Vecca blemish spot patches, I just saw these somewhere for I think $1.70. I don't remember if it was Style Korean or Style Vana, but you can always get 44 of these for under $2. And what can I say? I like saving money. If I save money on the skincare, then I can afford to buy more mushroom hats. Next on my list is another ingredient. This is formerly one where I didn't do a lot of exploration, but I just did for good reason. Let's talk about benzoyl peroxide. Now, I use benzoyl peroxide. It has been incredibly helpful for me in reducing acne. I do use it in a cleanser. This gives you a little bit of a more gentle experience. I also like the 4% level in a cleanser. It is true that the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser is what started it all for me. It is what started it all. Before this, I thought I couldn't use benzoyl peroxide as a leave-on. It is difficult very difficult for my dry skin type, but in a cream-based cleanser, oh, this has been so wonderful. However, as I've mentioned quite a few times throughout this video, I am not a loyalist. I am somebody who likes to save money. And I was browsing the Ulta website recently, and I could not believe the price of this. I really couldn't believe it. I was over here going, it's $19? That penny will not fool me, that is $19. I was just going, I don't remember this being that expensive. Well, you know, I have been making ingredients lists with prices for Western products for years at this point. So I pulled up my old ingredients list for this, which clearly says, this used to be $14. I'm sorry, I thought that we have a 3% inflation rate. 3% CeraVe. I feel like Joe would call this some malarkey. So I worked myself up into being mad. I don't know, maybe it's an Aries thing. And I started looking around for other options. And I bought this, the Pinoxyl Acne Creamy Wash 4% Benzoyl Peroxide. And you know, I might even like this more than CeraVe. Same active ingredient, same creamy base, larger quantity of product, and it's also thicker. The CeraVe is kind of runny. This is thicker. It's actually easier to use. So it's basically the same thing. I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I'm happy with it. Yeah, we had a nice run, CeraVe. Panoxyl is now my friend. And my friends, that's it for today's video. I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you have the same mentality? Do you love an ingredient, but you'll buy it from different brands, different 
products on the market? Let me know if you have examples. I would love to read them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.